are continuing today with our series that was started a couple weeks ago that's entitled Made for Mondays. Come on, somebody. Made for Mondays, right? Mondays don't have to be moan days, right? Did you catch it? Okay, we are made in the image of God. And as we read in Genesis um, in week one, that God himself worked. He had a job. And in fact, he worked six out of the seven days of the week. And at the end of each day, he said that the work that he had done was good. So maybe we should take that into our lives as we go to work and at the end of each of our work days that we would come home and say this day was good in fact in week one we did learn about f- that work is from god and work is for god but work is also with god and our key verse for this series comes from romans chapter 12 and i want you to read it with me and i love it love it in the message um, translation verse one says this so here's what i want you to do god helping you take your everyday ordinary life you're sleeping you're eating going to work and walking around life and place it before god as an offering embracing what god does for you is the best thing you can do for him See, our worship is not just about Sundays. Our everyday, ordinary lives are all to be a part of worship to God. Now, we want to go into a Monday and every other day of the week, and we want to be filled with purpose, and we want to be filled with a destiny that God has placed onto our lives as he is leading us into that day. So I want you to keep your eye, your hearts open today, and we're going to pray together before David comes to share the message this morning. Let me pray with you. Father, we come to you today with open hearts because we want to hear from you. Some of us dread Mondays because of our job. Some of us dread Mondays because of our school or our boss or our coworkers. So, Lord, would you speak a word of encouragement into our hearts today? Give us the strength to overcome each day. Help us to know that you are with us and that everything we're doing is for you. I pray all this in the strong and the mighty name of Jesus amen hey as we just stay in prayer i got one more prayer i want us to pray this morning uh one year ago uh this week uh we had a a guest here uh, as we honored graduates his name was dr mark muirhead and uh, mark and i go back way 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 back (laughs) back when i was first starting in ministry he was one of the leaders in our state and uh i have been to Jamaica in missions work with Mark Uh, I can't tell you how many times over over 20 over 25 and uh, and there's a a church there that is kind of the home base it's uh, in an area called Norwood Uh, last last weekend I was sitting with uh, uh, we had a we we performed a wedding Natalie uh, who usually sits right up here uh, did her wedding last weekend and uh, we were sitting at a table with several ladies, and I think three of them out of the four were from Jamaica. And we were talking about Jamaica and all this stuff. And, and uh, I started telling them about all the places that I've been. I started naming neighborhoods. And the girl said, man, you've been to the real Jamaica. I'm like, me not tourist. <laughs> me Jamaican. <laughs> but... Uh, Dr. Mark is there speaking in Norwood, and uh, he's going to be doing a special presentation for Pastor Erlinda Wagstaff, who was the pastor there at that church for many, many years. Uh, the church I was at in North Carolina, we bought a car for uh, Pastor Wagstaff. Our church helped put a roof over their new building. They have the largest sanctuary in all of Montego Bay uh, in, in that little community. And they are doing God's work right there in that island. And so I want you to just join me in praying for Dr. Mark right now. Lord, I pray for Mark 
as he ministers for you today right there in Norwood. God, so many friends there, so many memories there. Lord, so many times of ministering there and, Lord, being ministered to right there on the grounds of that full gospel central assembly of God church there in Montego Bay. Lord, I pray, God, that you would be with him today. I pray as he blesses Pastor Wagstaff, Lord, I pray it would just be, Lord, energy and encouragement and hope and strength to her life, Lord. God, I pray that she would be honored today. And Lord, that your power and your glory would go forward today as Mark ministers for you, God. We believe your hand's going to be on him. Protect him while he's in that uh, nation today and in this week, Lord, as he continues do the, to do the work that you called him to so many years ago, Lord, March of 1993, as we sat together there, Lord, and you put the call on his life, God, to minister to people on that island. God, I just pray that you would use him today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Let's bless the Lord today. Yeah. Well, made for Mondays is what we're talking about. And anybody struggle with Monday mornings? Anybody? Okay, there's a couple of y'all do that, right? Uh, you get the Monday morning blues. And whether you realize it or not, I want you to know that your work matters to God. And, and God matters to your work. And so uh, we, we think about Mondays, we think about work. Some of us just struggle with that. So I did a little Google search for Mondays, and I found some pictures that are pretty, they pretty much nail Mondays. Here's the first one. It's Monday again. <laughs> Come on, y'all felt like that before, hadn't you? <laughs> I, I, this is one of my favorite right here, Beatles Monday. <laughs> Just kind of walking into the Monday like this, all right? Uh, I got a couple more of these. How about uh, me on Monday? Uh, may I have a Monday-sized cup of coffee to go, please? <laughs> That's what we need. And then, then I got one more. And just like that, poof, weekend gone. <laughs> Mondays, we can, we can laugh about it. But the truth is, God made us for more than Sunday. It's easy to come in here on Sunday and enjoy the worship and the presence of God and being around God's people and, and, and being encouraged and inspired. But, man, some of us, man, we lose our inspiration in the parking lot. <laughs> or we lose it when we get out on 27 or I-4. But uh, others of us, you know, by Monday or Tuesday, we're like, ah, oh, we need the Lord. So we need God in our lives every day of the week. He's made us for every day, including Mondays. Now, one-third of our lives are spent working. One-third of our lives are spent working. So we need to know that he's placed you in that job. Yeah. Yeah. He's placed you on that school campus, students. He's placed you in that neighborhood, retired folks. <laughs> He's placed us there for a purpose. He wants our lives to shine his light, not just on Sundays when y'all are in here around other believers, but hey, he wants us to shine his light every day of the week, everywhere we go, even on our jobs. And maybe you're like, well, pastor, I want to be made for Monday, but it's really hard right now to live in an ungodly culture at work, it's, it's hard. I know, Pastor, you don't know. You're like, you work for church. You're not like around that. And, you know, I have worked other jobs before being a pastor. It's been a long time, uh, but I have. Uh, my first job when I was 16 years old, uh, I think I may have started when I was 15. I, might, I couldn't remember, y'all. I, You know, I'm about to be 55. I'm starting to lose a little bit of that <laughs> memory cells but uh uh you know what do you do for a job in the mid 1980s you get a job at the mall right <laughs> and that's what i did i became a sales associate at mitchell's formal wear store in the eastridge shopping mall 
We specialized in tuxedo rentals for weddings, for proms, and all of your special occasions. I think minimum wage was $3.35 back then. So some of y'all are like upset, 15. <laughs> Go back to 335. I know everything costs less. Yeah, I could fill up my little Toyota truck for about 80 cents a gallon <laughs> back then. Uh, but it, when you remember, or when you think back to, to your first job, for me, see, I'd grown up in a pastor's kid, as, as a pastor's kid. I grew up in a pastor's home. I was very sheltered in life. Now, I went to public school, so I was around you know, plenty of heathen there, right? <laughs> uh, there are plenty of people that weren't Christ followers and ungodly people. You know, I mean, I, I, I can tell you stories from high school. But uh, I, I found out real quick when I started my job what it was like to have non-believers for boss and co-workers. My boss, man, she loved her some, some Virginia Slims, y'all. And uh, this is back in the day in North Carolina where there was, like, y'all don't know what it's like to, like, not have smoking in your job place or in your restaurant or whatever now. They, they, don't, they banned all that. But back then, man, our back room, it was a smoke-filled back room. <laughs> it was thick back there. And uh, uh, sh my coworkers, their, their language belonged on a Navy ship rather than a dignified tuxedo shop. Uh, it was kind of really out of place to me. I was had not been around that a whole lot at home, especially not around that. And I, I had some of my first real challenges of faith as a young teenager uh, who was trying to follow God, trying to do the right thing, and living around these people and working around these people every day who did not share the same values or the same culture or the same spirituality that I did. And I had some uh, challenges with honesty there for the first time. Man, I, I had some coworkers, man, who would lie to the customer so bad. They would blame other coworkers. They would blame like our warehouse for mistakes that they had made. And then they'd act like, but I'm going to fix it for you, you know. And they're the ones that messed it up, right? But they would lie about, well, this person did that or that person did that. And I just sat there going, man, how are they doing that? Uh, we had an employee, even, even I had an employee that was a friend of mine that was caught stealing money from the, the store. I just, come on, I mean, work can be hard, right? And it can be hard to stand strong as a believer in a tough work environment. I mean, I was a, a committed Christian, but it was hard to live out my, my faith in an environment where no one else seemed to care much about God or righteousness or the church. And I'm guessing that there's probably plenty of you in here this morning that may be working at a job right now where you're having similar experiences of people that you work with every day that don't care that much about God or the church or spirituality. And I'm not just talking about hard work today, like working hard, because you were made to work hard. Uh, God led the, the way in, in Genesis, he worked hard for six days and he rested one day really well, and that's what we should do. Uh, we were made to work hard and, and to find joy and pleasure in, in, in working hard, but what do you do when your environment that you're in is toxic? Or the culture, uh, uh, cultural headwinds that are around you uh, that go up against you day after day or against what God's word says. How do you enjoy going to work on Monday when your boss is difficult or there's real challenges? There's some stats I found. <clears throat> it said 13% of people enjoy and look forward to their work. 63% of people are unhappy with their work. That's staggering. And 24% of people hate their job. Come on, those are some sad statistics. I mean, especially when you think about the fact that we, we spend a third of our lives working. That means 87% of people <laughs> spend a third of their lives unhappy with their work or hating their work. 
That's a lot. And that's no way for us to live. John chapter 10, verse 10. It says this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Maybe you read a version that says have it more abundantly. See, God sent Jesus for us to be able to enjoy a more abundant and a full life, not just a two-thirds life. It's like you're working one-third and hating it or disliking it, but then you got the other two-thirds, right? You know, like, hey, I'm full at home. I'm, I'm full at church, but work, come on. <laughs> no, Jesus wants you to live a full life. A full life. So I want to share with you real quickly over the next few minutes that we have today, uh, just two keys to living a full life. I know every preacher is supposed to have three points, but I'm an oddball, y'all. We're just going to go with two today. Can y'all, if you need a third one, make it up and email it to me so I'll know, you know, and then I can like you know, add it to the notes or something. But we're just going to have two this morning. And the first one is this. Don't be consumed with your next. Be faithful with your now. If you want to live the full life that God's called you to live, don't be consumed with your next. Be faithful with your now. Some people are like, I'll be happy when I get there. Or I'll be fulfilled when I can do that. No, no, no. Don't be consumed with what's next. We need to celebrate what's in front of us right now. Come on, you've been there. When, when, when I just can't get that promotion, or I can't just make a little bit more money, when my hours can't change, uh, when, when I can, you know, I, I feel like things will be better if I can get transferred to a different department. Right or, or things will be better when I, when I don't have to work for this manager or that person. When, 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 yet even when, when gets here, it doesn't always bring what you're expecting. Don't be consumed by what's next. We've got to learn how to be faithful with what's right now. We've been leading uh, freedom groups for about a year here now at One Hope for, for Men, and uh, we're going to be rolling out freedom groups for women this fall, y'all. It's going to be great. And one of the truths that has hit me hard as we're going through this material uh, to help us grow and to be more like Jesus is, is that it's not about the destination. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not, not about the destination. It's all about the journey. So some of us are worried about, you know, well, when I get there, the destination, when I have this, when I can afford that, when, when we can go on that vacation, when I can, you know, have this kind of house, when I can move into that neighborhood. And we think about the destination, but it's all about the journey, about getting where we're going. There was a guy in the Bible that should have quit. Everything around him was saying, what are you doing? Why don't you just throw in the towel, right? Even when you're living for God, there can be seasons where it looks like things are just going from bad to worse. And that's man, his name was Joseph. And if you don't know his story, it's in the book of Genesis. And I'm just going to share a little bit today. I may even talk about this a little bit more next week as we wrap up this series. But Genesis 37 and verse 5, Joseph had a dream. And we told his brothers they hated him all the more. Come on, talk about family dysfunction. And in verse 19, as we skip over, it says, here, his brothers say, here comes that dreamer. <laughs> they said to each other, come now, let's kill him. Let's throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Come on, y'all. That's a little vengeful, right? <clears throat> Verse 23 says this. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe. He had been given a coat of many colors by his father. And it was like fancy, right? Better than members only, y'all. 
And this ornate robe he was wearing, it says, and, and, and they took him and they threw him into the cistern or the well. And the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. So they didn't drown him. They just threw him in this deep, deep hole. Let's skip ahead, verse, uh, chapter 39, verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Now, I know that verse might mess with some of your theology. Because if, if the Lord was with Joseph, why was he in this kind of situation? Right? If God's with you, everything's supposed to be up and to the right. Right? Every, all, all my bills are paid. I got money in my pocket. Driving a nice car. Living in a nice house. Got a great family. Uh, you know, if God is with me, everything's supposed to be perfect. Right? Wrong. Some of us might think uh, that you're out of God's will because things are hard or, 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 or they're tough right now. But might I suggest that maybe if you're going through a hard time, you're going through a tough time. Some might uh, think like, hey, I can't uh, prosper where I work right now because I don't work for a Christian boss or a godly organization. Listen, God can prosper you right in the middle of what you're doing right now. He can bless you and he can bless your company because you're there. Because he's blessing your company because he wants to bless you. It's not about them, it's about you. Let's read on, Genesis 39, starting in verse 3. <clears throat> when his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and he became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted uh, to his care everything that he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Come on, the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except for the food that he ate. Come on, wouldn't you like to live that kind of life? You woke up and all you have to worry about is, hmm, what will I eat today? Because everything is taken care of. Everything is being blessed because of the person you've got handling things. And that was Joseph. Look, Joseph's excellence plus God's blessing equaled influence in Joseph's life. We're in a world where everyone wants influence, but what they want you know, to give is like, hey, I, I want influence, but I'll give 50% effort. And I'm going to leave God out of the equation. As you do it, as work, work is not church. Work is work, right? Work is work and church is church. And, but, but God wants us to have him part of our lives every day. And, and, and God's calling us to give a spirit of excellence in everything that we do. And when you do that, he will bless you. He will give you influence. Come on, you can't expect a promotion if you're not faithful with where you're at. Shall I say that again? We can't expect a promotion if we're not faithful with where we're at. I remember that first job I was telling you about, 15, 16 years old, working in a smoke-filled back room. <laughs> I just like, uh, it was crazy, you know, for me. But uh, while everybody else did whatever they did, I always tried to do exactly what I was supposed to do. And you know what? My boss saw that. And honestly, within the, within the first year, she had me doing all of her reports. It was like I was Joseph. <laughs> she was like handed me the keys and she went home, you know, to smoke fill her car in her <laughs> house. Uh, but, uh, you know, she left me there to do the job. I mean, I'm like 16, 16 and a half, 17 years old, and I'm like, almost really a manager at that store. I'm handling problems. 
I'm driving to the warehouse in Charlotte, picking up orders and picking up things that were problems that all the rest of the yahoos messed up during the week and all the people are showing up to pick up their wedding stuff on Friday and it's not right. And I got to run early Saturday morning and pick it up and bring it and fix it and do all, y'all learned how to hem pants. <laughs> I'm like, if somebody's pants come out and they're really short, right? You're like, you got to fix it. I'll fix it right now for you. You know, I learned how to do all that stuff. And I was promoted and gave him, given blessing because I was trying to do what I was doing with all my heart for the Lord. And if we're not faithful with what God gives us, how can God trust us with something else? We've got to be faithful with this, and then he'll entrust us with that. Right. See, if you're <clears throat> too important in your own mind's eye to be faithful with something little, like, oh, that's a little job. Let somebody else do that, right? God will make sure that the great thing you have in your heart will always seem like it's just out of reach. Joseph never had the motive of one day I'm going to be running this whole nation no, or even this whole house. But his, his, his motivation was that he needed to be faithful with what he had been given. See, when we put God first, he's going to bless the rest. Proverbs chapter 3, verses uh, 4 through 6 from the Living Bible says, If you want favor with both God and man and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely. Don't ever trust yourself. In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Come on, somebody. I love that. I love that. All right, two keys to a full life. We shared the first one. Don't be consumed with your next. Be faithful with your now. Here's the second one, the last point. Have work. Uh, uh, hard work is key, but being a workaholic can kill you. I, I need this more than most, right? I'm getting better in my older age, but uh, I have spent my life working hard, sometimes working too hard. We spend more hours working today, though, than, than ever before, right? Most people do. It doesn't mean that you, you're, you're going to the office more, right? Uh, because, you know, since COVID and stuff, uh, we're not going to the job site as much. But, uh, but <clears throat> we live in a day and age where things have changed, where we can literally work from anywhere at any time with most of our jobs. Through technology and the things that we have, we can, we can work from anywhere. It's pretty trendy, especially since the pandemic, to work remotely, right? So we can work from our home office. We got our work office. We got your Starbucks office. I like that one. You got your car office because when you're like at a stoplight, you can answer the phone or you can answer a quick text or email Right when you're stopped in traffic or, or you're stopped at the light, uh, your phone can ding or ping or whatever it does when you're at the t-ball game or on a date night or wherever you are. And all of a sudden you're drawn right back into work and we can work all the time nonstop if we don't put in some parameters. Why do we do this? Maybe it's because of a spirit of fear. Like, like if I don't go, go, go. God's not going to, no, 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 that's not it. And some people say, well, hey, give God your best, but don't lay your life down and hurt yourself and those around you. I think that's true. Some people think like, hey, everything's riding on me, right? And I think that's fear and that's fueled by pride, you know, birth from fear. Uh, look, it's not all on you because you're not God. And God is supposed to be with you in your work. And we can lean on him and trust in him to help us. Well, God helps those who helps themselves, Pastor. Well, I had a nice try, but that might be on a coffee cup, but it's not in the Bible. <laughs> God does want to help you. He wants to be with you and strengthen you and take care of you. Well, money doesn't grow on trees, Pastor. <laughs> no, it does not. But God did make the trees and everything else. And he's in control and he can take care of us. 
And he's just looking for us to trust in him. See, if you'll just put uh, his hand and allow him to put his hand on whatever you think is your best, it's going to be so much more than you could ever have imagined. Some of us are consumed with work. Maybe that's why we're losing at home. We're focused on this project, how to handle that employee. We're losing with our kids. Come on, you've been there before. You're eating dinner with a family, but your mind's on something else, some other project, some other, some other issue, your boss, your manager, whatever it is. King Solomon, in all of his wisdom, I think had something good to say to us in Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. He says, unless the Lord builds the house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved one. Come on, do you know what that means? When I work as unto the Lord and I involve him in the process, I'm giving him my best, but I need his hand at work on my life and in my life. And he says he gives his loved ones rest. Come on. We don't have to burn the candle at both ends. We can rest in him. He wants us to work hard, but he doesn't want us to be workaholics. We can rest in the fact that God loves us, he cares for us, and he is our source. Some of us act like our job is our source. Come on, y'all. We're working for the Lord. He's our source. He's our help. As we close, I want you to think about submitting your heart to the Lord. And I also want you to think about something else. I want you to think about submitting your job. Maybe submitting your career, your calling that you have to the Lord. Because unless the Lord builds the house, y'all. Come on, submission simply means this. It's an invitation for someone to lead. When you submit to the Lord, you're saying, Jesus, I want you to be the leader of my life. I submit myself to you. I just want to ask this morning, have you ever done that before? Have you ever asked Christ to be the leader and the Lord of your life? See, what keeps us at arm's length from God is our sin. Often we try to do good works so that when we stand before God, we may hope that like our good works will outstack our bad works, right? Or outweigh our our, our bad works. But that's not the way that God works. See, we can never do enough good things to repay or to pay for the bad things in our life, the sin. That's why God sent his son Jesus to come into this world uh, to, to take all of our sins so that we can have a way to heaven. See, when we surrender to Jesus and he sends his Holy Spirit to come into our lives, he leads us and he guides us and he gives us this abundant better life so this morning as we come to a moment of prayer together if you've never accepted jesus as your lord and savior can i tell you you can do that in this moment right now i want to lead you in a prayer in just a moment and then after that prayer i'm gonna i want to pray over everybody concerning your job your career your calling whether you love it whether you just tolerate it or whether you hate it today, I want to pray God's blessing and his direction over you right now. So would you just bow your heads right now? And if you've never invited Christ into your life, if you've never submitted your life to Jesus and said, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Lord, I don't want to live at arm's length from you. I want you to embrace me as a son or as a daughter. I want to, I want to be accepted into your family. I want you to lead me every step of the way. This prayer is for you this morning. You don't have to get up out of your seat. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand today. Just right where you're at. 
I want you to pray this prayer. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he's going to rescue you. He's going to save you. He's going to transform your life. Does it doesn't mean that everything's going to be rainbows and care bears tomorrow. It just means that you're not facing it alone. God's with you. And he's going to help you. And his Holy Spirit's going to be within you. So I want to invite you to pray this. Maybe everybody across the room could just pray this together. Let's pray this. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside me. Make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord my Savior, and my soon-coming King. I give you my life. Thank you for the hope that I have for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Lord, I pray over every person here. I pray for their jobs. I pray for their work. Lord, some of us love our jobs. Others of us are struggling in our jobs right now. Some of us are looking for a job. Some are seeking your direction about a change in career changing jobs. Lord, I I, I just pray right now, we submit our jobs, our careers, our callings to you. Would you lead us every day? Would you make the path straight for us? Help us to be faithful with our nows. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to work hard, but trust you completely. I pray that now in the strong and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate what God is doing in our lives today.